Welcome to our family cafe. I'm so happy that you joined me today for our family cafe that happens every single Friday in June. Welcome, so happy that you're here. My name is Angela Searcy. I have a BA in English and Secondary Education, a Master of Science in Child Development, and a Doctorate in Education. I am a consultant, I was a teacher, I'm also a college professor, but most importantly, I'm a mom of four children ages 24 to 14. Well, welcome. Today, we are going to read three stories. So, Llama Llama Mrs. Mama, it's, oops, it's, <laughs> it's hard. Ooh, I'm trying to, okay, my orientation is off. It's hard to be five. And then also we're gonna finish up with Big Al, which is more for maybe a little bit older child, more like six or seven. So glad that you're with me today. Go ahead and chat in the chat box. Tell me your questions, give me your comments, and definitely share all those great emojis. And if you like something, please um, shout that out and tell everyone. All right. So remember, our um, family cafe happens every Friday in June, 12.30 Central T Standard Time until 1.30 Central Standard Time. What I'm going to share right now in the chat box are extension activities. Um, so one of them first is a blog that I wrote um, from our discussion last week about racism and race. The next one is extension activities for Llama Llama Mrs. Mama. Then there are extension activities for Big Al and extension activities for It's Hard to Be Five. So there's tons of activities for you to extend this family time after we're together and keep it going at home or at school, no matter where you are. So many of the programs that I work with are actually starting back to go to school for summer session. Yes, summer session starting. Um, some of the schools that I work with are child care programs. And since parents are actually going back to work, child care programs are opening up. Um, this is an, I'm from Illinois, and I know it varies by state, but that's one of the reasons that I pick this book, Llama Llama Mrs. Mama, because some of the programs, hi everyone from Chicago Youth Centers, hi families, how are you? Um, good to see you. Uh, so many of our families are like, okay, now we had a lot of time that we've been out of school what does that mean for children especially young children who are going back to school so this book is llama llama mrs mama come kids come gather around and let's get started to read our story what do you think the story is about well yeah there you have a mama and it is about a mama right you do see yes Llama? What's a llama? Well, let's find out. <laughs> llama, llama, warm in bed. Wakey, wakey, sleepy head. Llama begins school, school today. Time to learn and time to play. Make the bed and find some clothes. Brush the teeth and blow the nose. Eat some breakfast, clean the plate. Whoops, ooh, we're running late. Drive to school and park the car. Tell the teacher who you are. Meet new faces, hear new names, see new places, watch new games. What do you notice? Oh, I see lots of animals. They're all different. That is, right, you are, that is zebra. And that's the llama. Should we keep going? Okay. Hang the coat and say goodbye. Llama, llama, feeling shy. Llama, go, llama, mama, llama goes away. Llama, llama has to stay. Yeah, how do you think llama, llama, llama feels? Let's see. Strange new teacher, strange new toys, lots of kids and lots of noise. What would Llama like to do? Llama Llama feels so new. Build a castle out of box, make a rocket from a box. Llama Llama shakes his head, Llama walks away instead. 
Here's a little chug-a-choo with a captain and a crew. What the llama like to ride? Llama llama tries to hide. Let's see more. Reading stories on the rug. Kids are cold. Sitting snug. Would the llama like to look? Llama llama hates that book. Time for lunch, now find a seat. Llama doesn't want to eat. Llama makes a little moan. Llama Llama feels alone. Have you ever felt alone? Me too. Llama misses Mama so. Why did Mama Llama go? Yeah, sometimes going to work? Yes. It's too much for little Llama. Llama Llama misses Mama. Don't be sad, new little Llama. It's okay to miss your Mama. But don't forget when day is through, she'll come right back to you. Llama, please don't fuss. Have some fun and play with us. Let's see what happens. Put on coats and run outside. See the playhouse. Try the slide. <gasps> Tag and jump rope. Hide and seek. Close your eyes. But do not peek. Now it's time to draw and write. Big crayons. Colors so bright. Take some paper from the stack. Mama, Llama, you came back. <laughs> Teacher gets a goodbye hug. Wave to friends on Reading Rug. Yeah, you can do your waving. <laughs> Climb the playhouse with the slide. See if Mama fits inside. Does she fit? You're right, she's a little big. <laughs> you are right. Lots to show and lots to say. Back again another day. Llama finds out something new. He loves Mama. And school. And school, too. <laughs> Did you like that story? All right, give your cheers. Come on, everyone. This story was written by permission of Scholastic. Thank you, Scholastic, for letting us read stories until June 30th. Awesome. And um, also, I want to share, yes. So that was, come on, everybody. Let's sing together. Thank you for my story. Thank you for my story. <laughs> All right, so what a great story to read to your child. Um, some extension activities that you could try if your child is going back to school and missing not just mama, <laughs> but also papa and, and, and grandma and grandma, grandpa and auntie or whoever they're with. Um, or they have been with during the day. And extension activities can be write a letter um, to mama or write a letter um, to someone that you miss. So if there's somebody in your life that you miss, you could actually write a letter to them. Other extension activities is draw a picture. Um, think of ideas of things that you can do when you're feeling really sad. Um, so that's another idea. Um, other extension ideas is to think about um, doing a graph. So you can also ask, add some math activities for thinking about, okay, well, how many things were you able to do in school? What are the things that you like best? Uh, you know, those are other extension activities that are in the chat box. So go ahead and click that book nook to get more ideas to keep this activity going. Uh, and then also, this is a great book to talk about feelings. So make a graph of what you do when you're feeling lonely or you're feeling sad and create that emotional vocabulary. So that's another thing that we've been talking about all along is giving children new vocabulary words for lonely or sad or supporting children to understand what to do when they have those feelings. So let's keep our story time going. Yes, I'm gonna talk for parents, but I'm gonna give kids a break. Yes, pretend to be your llama, jump around, and then get ready for our next story. Now this story is all about how hard it is to be five. 
And this story is written with permission from HarperCollins Books. Thank you for letting us share this story. In the chat box are more extension activities for talking about how it's hard to be five. Now remember, while story time happens, children should be moving and dancing and clapping and talking as the story goes along. Remember our P's, we're listening, and one of them is being physical when you read a story. So let's go ahead and start reading. Come on, kids, gather around. It's hard to be five by Jamie Lee Curtis and Laura Cornell. All right. What? Yes, what do you think this book is about? Let's see. I think you're right. Yes, it is about a boy. It's about children. It's hard to be five. I'm little no more. Good old days are gone. By one, two, three, four. It's hard to be five, just yelled at my brother. My mind says to do one thing, but my mouth says another. It's mine. <laughs> Give it to me. Mom. You say that too? <laughs> it's hard to be five. I've got to keep going. My clothes can't keep up because my body keeps crawling. Take this off. Let's see what's next. At five, I hear no and don't. I can't win. When balls bowl out inside at my tin juice box pins, I rather hear try it and sure, I confess. And if dirt isn't involved, oh, oh a very loud yes. <laughs> it's hard to be five. Parents want you all clean. But washing my face makes me feel crabby and mean. Do you feel crabby and mean sometimes? Me too. It's hard to be five. All I want to do is play. I, I'm starting at school and don't get a say. School seems so scary. School seems so strange. I'm only five and my whole world's going to change. Oh, that is a school. Does it look scary? Hmm, let's see. It's hard to be five and wanting to hit. When Scott cuts in line, it says, I did it. At five, I do things I didn't mean to do, like when I bit Jake because he cut in line too. Oops. It's hard to be five. It takes Superman skill. Sitting in circle, sitting so still. Sitting still, sitting, wait, still sitting still. <laughs> Still, sitting, still, <gasps> sit still. Oh, your teacher says that too? Let's see what else she says. And then there's the walking all by myself and only picked up to reach a high shelf. I walk to the park. I walk to the school. I walk to the bus. I walk to the pool. I walk to karate, I walk with closed eyes. I walk like a ninja chopping bad guys. I'll do your ninja. <laughs> it's fun to be five. Big changes are here. And my body's a car and I'm licensed to steer. Now let's turn the book. Let's turn the book so you can see. <gasps> do you have a license to steer? Very nice. We will have to make one. You are right. Let's turn it back this way. <laughs> At five, I'm a worker, a bee among bees. I build things and grow things. Say thank you and please. Oh, you say that too? Me too. Some fun things are hard. Some hard things are fun. I know when to walk. I know when to run. I know when to stop and I know when to go. I know when to push, and I know when to tow. Do you push a stroller? You have a baby? Yes, and you know when to tow. <laughs> Good job. 
At five, I lie down alone on my bed and dream of my past and my future ahead. And when I mess up or do right, it's a start because I have my own mind and I have my own heart. Where is your heart? Yes. I have a heart too. It's hard fun to be five, so strong and so loud. Give me five, cause I know it, I'm here, and I'm proud. The end. All right, give me five, give me five. All right, sing everybody, thank you for my story. Thank you for my story. <laughs> So hard to be five extension activities for families that are out there listening. So we're going to share some extension activities for this book. And remember, friends, we have one more book to read about, oh, my goodness. Oh, it's all about Big Al. So don't go anywhere. We still have time for us to read some more stories. So these first two stories were a great stories about going back to school. And we can, uh, extension activities include talking about how it's hard to be anything. So making your own book about how it's hard to be a girl, or it's hard to be a boy, or it's hard to do something is a great way to have an extension activity for this story. There are other ext extension activities that I put in the chat box. So another idea is to make your own slogan, right? It's hard to be five. Okay, so it's hard to have curly hair or it's hard to wear glasses. Then make your slogans on signs and carry your signs around <laughs> and do a parade in your neighborhood or in your classroom and have your signs up where children are learning about how, oh, what is it hard to be so people can know about it. This is also a great activity to create their slogans, go on a parade. You could also make t-shirts. That's another idea. So take a t-shirt and have the children draw on the t-shirt about how it's hard to do something and make up more slogans on their t-shirt. Then make a store where they can actually sell their t-shirts. Uh, they can sell them for real money or pretend money. <laughs> and then make a list of how, what they would charge for their t-shirts with their slogans. Then have go on a field trip or go look online to look about look at what other slogans are out there. So there's other slogans by other companies and then talk about how your slogan is different. Um, so that's another great extension activity. Now today is, oh yeah, we've been talking a lot about race and today is actually Juneteenth as, this, as we do our live. And signs are another idea to use to talk about unity or protesting. So to have children make up a sign about why they want, don't want to nap or why they want to stay up an hour earlier <laughs> and say it's hard to be five because I have to go to bed at eight. And have children make those signs and then kind of again do their own little protest. So protesting is not a bad thing. Protesting is actually a way that people use their words to be able to talk about something or right a something a problem that's important to them so that's another thing way to incorporate this book into an activity another idea is to just like i said go with the slogan idea so think about if you want to make a commercial right and get a video camera those are great things um talk about how commercials have a designer who creates a script and so you could do it so here we go as we talk about it's hard to be five you can really take this book and do so many extension activities. Literacy comes with writing your own book or writing a script for your own commercial. Doing your own advertising campaign involves draw, drawing, maybe working, collaborating with someone. So these are some great extension activities that you can do after the story. All right, everyone, give me those emojis. Tell me how you're liking our story time. If you like our story time, remember for June, we have one more story time next Friday at um, 1230 Central Standard Time. So I hope that you join me again and make sure that you like this page if you like my stories because I share tons of information and share this with others. 
Well, it looks like we have one more story. So if your children are moving around and kind of walked away, that's fine. Remember that story time doesn't have to be consecutively sitting. We talked about that before, that it's a lot of movement, taking breaks. And for very young children, they need several breaks in the midst of even reading one story. So sitting isn't associated with story time. Moving, engagement, interaction is a great um, way to kind of get stories happening. If you're not good at reading books um, for parents, don't forget you could tell a story. Tell a story about your own childhood. Tell a story about when you were five. Show pictures of when you were a young child. That's another great way to extend this story time, even if you're not a good reader. So we're going to, um, oh, I want to share one more idea that goes along with the story that I forgot, which is also creating a song. So we mentioned that um, often as people have, you know, you know, like an idea that they want to share out with like an advertising campaign, they have a jingle. So you can have children make their own song. It's hard to be six. You know, it's hard to wear glasses. <laughs> you know, so also another activity that includes the arts as well as writing right music is writing your own song about what it's hard for you to do. A great opportunity when you talk about what's hard in writing a song is the blues. So get some blues songs, <laughs> which are really wonderful songs. Come on, chat in with me, everybody. Go ahead, I wanna see that chat box start lighting up with the blues and introducing like, da na 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 it's hard to be five, da na 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 what you gonna do, da na 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 <laughs> right? So that's a great way to introduce a new genre of music. To young children or old children so remember these activities can extend to teenagers who are like it's hard to be 15 it just doesn't have to be about being five all right friends well come on back if you're taking your break if you went to go get a juice box and we're going to read one more story and then we're going to talk about extension activities to do at home or at school so our next story is big Al. And there is an extension activity for Big Al in the comments. Um, so you all have some great ideas to keep right, keep this all right, this story time alive after our time together. Oh, what do you think this story is about, friends? Oh, there is a fish. You're right. Let's find out more. All right, gather around. In the big blue sea. There was a very friendly fish named Big Al. You cannot find a nicer fish. Do you see him? Yeah, there he is. You're right. Let's find out more. But Al, Big Al, was also very scary. Does Big Al look scary to you? I know. He is a little scary. Let's find out more. <laughs> the other fish seemed to have at least one friend. Some had many, but Big Al, let's see another fish. Yeah, they do have friends. You do too? Okay. But Big Al had none. He didn't really blame the other fish. How could he be, expect little fish to trust a great big fish with eyes and skin and teeth like this. Here, let me turn. Let me... Oh, yes. This way. Let me go this way. <laughs> oh, I see their. Oh, I see. Yeah, you see their point. So Big Al was lonely and cried big salty tears into the big salty sea. But Big Al really wanted friends, so he worked at it. First, he tried wrapping himself up with seaweed. He thought it would be a great disguise, but no one else did. Who wants to stop and talk to a floating plant that has big, sharp teeth? Show your teeth. Let's see what happens next. Then he thought if he puffed himself round, up, puffed himself up round, the other fish would laugh and see how clever and silly he could be. 
All they saw was how big he could be, and they steered clear. Yes, he is big. You're big too? Puff. Puff yourself up. Let's see what happens next. Very early one morning, Big, big Owl went down to the bottom and flopped and wiggled himself into the sand until he was almost covered up. Let's see. Oh, yes, he is almost covered. Do you see? I see. He looked much smaller. When the other fish came near, Big Owl talked and joked with him and had a delightful time. Hey, it worked. Let's give some hearts. <laughs> But then one scratchy little grain of sand got stuck in his gills, and he, he, he sneezed. Oh, yeah. Oh, bless you. And when the clouds of sand cleared away, all the other fish were gone. Oh, yeah. How do you think he feels? Hmm. You might be right. Let's see. Big Al even changed his color one day. Oh, let's see. Oh, I see. So he could look like he belonged to a school of tiny fish passing by. You go to a school? Fish are in a school too. You are right. He bubbled along with them for a while, laughing and feeling like he was just one of the crowd. But he was so big and clumsy that when all the tiny fish darted to the left and then Quickly back to the right, Big Al just plowed straight ahead. He went bumping and thumping right into the fish. Boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. Yeah. Before he could even say, excuse me, they were gone. And he was all alone again, sadder than ever. You've been sad too? Oh, I know, yeah, you know how that feels. Just when Big Al was starting to be sure he would never have a single friend, something happened. He was floating sadly, watching some of the smaller fish, and was wishing he could come closer. As he watched, a net dropped down silently from above, and in an instant, they were caught. Do you see? I see the net. Oh, what do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. Big Al forgot all about being lonely, and he forgot all about being sad. His eyes bulged out even bigger and rounder than ever. And with an almighty flip of his tail, he opened his mouth and charged straight at the net. The net was strong, but Big Al was stronger. He ripped right through it, and all the little fish rushed out through the hole. Oh, he did it! They're all free! Good job, Big Al. But when Big Al tried to turn around and go back out through the hole, he got all tangled up and with the net, and he was stuck. Oh no! The net went higher and higher toward the bright surface of the sea. And the little fish watched as Big Al watched Big Al as he disappeared above them. What does disappear mean? It just means that he went away. He was gone. When the little fish were able to speak up again, all all they talked about was the huge, wonderful fish that saved them. How great it was to be free! But what a shame the big fellow had been captured. Just then, there was a tremendous crashing splash above them. And the small fish dashed away. Was it the net again? Not at all. It was Big Al. Those fishermen took one look at him and threw him right back in the ocean. Yep, I figured that too. And now there was one Huge, puffy, scary, fierce-looking fish in the sea who has more friends than anybody else. Big Al.
the end. All right, everyone, let's sing it. Thank you for my story. Thank you for my story. All right, well, Big Al, again, has extension activities that are in the chat box. And yes, Big Al talks a lot about size. What a great book for math activities. So you can talk about who's big, who's little. You can measure your child. It can be standard measurement using a tape measure. You could use a ruler, or it could be non-standard measurement using shoes or something around the house. You could use blocks. You could use Legos to measure yourself. You could measure your dog. Yes, you get the idea. <laughs> so Big Al is a great way to talk about measurement with children. It's also a great story to talk about, like we said, measurement, big and small. And it's also a good story about friendship. It's a good story to talk about attributes of other people. So what do you do when someone looks scary? What does scary mean? What does it mean if you feel frightened or intimidated? Introducing new vocabulary to young children about what does intimidation mean? This is also a story I would read to high schoolers or middle schoolers. It's a great introductory um, story that just talks about, you know, big or little. For teenagers, it's a great story to read to them to talk about surface. So what do you look like on your face? What are your attributes? Do you have long hair? Or it's a great story to talk about exclusion and bullying. So even though the reading level is more of a young child, it's a great book as a teacher to use, introduce the idea of bullying um, just by reading a story to children. And whether they're young children or teenagers, it's a good one. Um, sometimes I do read children's books to older children to get right to get a discussion going because children you gain their attention with these stories so even if i had a ninth grade class of course we were reading romeo and juliet and the outsiders but we were also reading about big al and exclusion and so the children actually love the stories even the teenagers in ninth grade love reading the story about big al um, it's a great one so it's a good one to talk about appearances um, exclusion. So if you have a bullying curriculum, Big Al is a great story to read. Also, in my book, um, Push Past It, I also talk about exclusion in terms of race. So one interesting um, study that I want to share, this actually on page 30, if you have my book, and I'm just going to read this out loud about a study. It's college professors and researchers, Andrew Todd Keasley, them, and Rebecca Neal, collected pictures of facial expressions being made of people of various ages and races, and then showed those pictures to undergraduate students. Next, the researchers had the students categorize words and pictures of objects as threatening or non-threatening. What they did when they did this um, research study is they found that participants were more likely to classify pictures and words as threatening after seeing black faces. For example, yeah, you're like, wait a minute, let me hear more. One of the pictures, for example, showed a gun. After viewing the face of the white child, participants perceived the gun as a toy. But when they put the picture um, in the non, and they, and they put the picture in a non-threatening category. However, when viewing the face of a black child, participants were more likely to perceive the gun as a weapon and place the picture in the threatening category, along with words such as hostile or violent. This pattern held true even when participants saw pictures of black children as young as five. So there's research to actually show um, that some children are perceived older and bigger than what they are. So often um, children of color, including black children, are perceived in a different light, not as innocent. Um, that's not me saying that, that's research and talking about perceptions and biases. So this is a great story that speaks to that some children may, so it's an important story for a couple of things. It gets children talking about size, which is wonderful, bullying, exclusion, you can't play with me, you can't come to my party. So it's a good thing talking about those um, ideas. It's also a good story to talk about race, facial features, um, talk about how some people are excluded within society and why. So it has so many, so much rich information whether you're talking about size, a math lesson, a social studies lesson, a history lesson about who's been in excluded in our history, 
it's a great story for, of course, literature. So you could write your own story about how you were excluded from something and why you were excluded and how that made you feel to be excluded. So this is another story that really, as you look through science, so that's the other piece, I forgot about that. The story is about fish. So you could take the story and then go on that realm to talk about fish, get pictures of fish, talk about the fish, the different attributes of the fish. Um, Big Al is in uh, salt water. So talk about fish that are in salt water or those who are in fresh water. It's a great story for any, right? We could literally go down an entire lesson, whether you're a homeschool parent, whether you're, uh, your child goes to school or you're just doing a, you know, a parent just doing an activity that this book can actually fit in for literacy, for math, for science, social, emotional. Yeah, it's a really good one. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> All right. So as we think about how to read stories, you notice that as I was reading, I mentioned a few things. And we talk about those P's again. Being physical as children read a story is really important. Pausing. There's moments where I pause and ask open-ended questions, even though you all are online and not in person. So pausing. Pausing also for new vocabulary. So there was new vocabulary in some of the books. Uh, those are great ways to kind of make an extension as well. So think about those P's when you're reading, which is pausing, uh, movement, being physical, and those are great parts of story time as well. What I shared in the chat box were some book notes. And this is a book note that I actually printed out from Llama Llama Mrs. Mama. And book notes help you to think about how to introduce a story to um, children. First, it talks about what to do before reading the book. So you can have children talk about someone, for example, with Llama Llama Mrs. Mama, about how they felt lonely. You could do an activity before for pre-reading to talk about what it's like to, for emotions and have children start with their own story first. Then you could also have children bring in pictures of their own family. That's a great way to write to begin a story or draw pictures. Then it talks about while reading the book, um, look at the pictures that are in the book, bringing out the attributes and the differences between the animals. Great one to talk about diversity and then also talk about some science and things like that. Then on the back of the book nook, it goes into more activities to do in your classroom or at home. So it's talking about feeling alone and there's an art activity that goes with the story, dramatic play if you have a group of children, and then also music. Uh, so I mentioned blues when we were reading the story about it's hard to be five. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> it's hard to be five. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I, I'm, I'm singing off the cuff, so I just <laughs> I didn't really make up the song. So um, uh, Llama Llama Mrs. Mama is also a great opportunity to create a song about missing someone. So what you would do as a teacher or a parent is get a playlist of songs just about missing you. Uh, those are great ones. I'm also I'm already thinking of a song from the 80s about missing you. <laughs> it's already running through my head. And then have your child make their own playlist or write their own songs about missing somebody. And then have everybody share their playlist. So that could be done for any age. And then also children writing their songs, which don't, you know, one thing I think that teachers as well, uh, music teachers actually know this. But other teachers may forget that music is math. So music is not just right arts, but also there's measures, there's whole notes, there's half notes. So though, so you're actually when you're talking about creating a song, you're also incorporating some math um, pieces here. You could also talk about doing a duet, which brings in some more social emotional and partnering. Lastly, you don't have to always sing a song, but you can lip sync a song. So that's where that TikTok comes in. <laughs> so you can also create a TikTok with, um, you know, using this um, in, in, uh, as, as an idea. And also you can, in addition to doing a TikTok, you're going to have children lip sync without the TikTok for using the app. 
So lip syncing is a great way, especially as children are quiet or shy. Karaoke, come on everybody. Karaoke is a great way to incorporate music, have children um, who have language issues. So there's some of you, okay, raise your hand out there. If you're a teacher or a parent, sometimes we have children that are shy, don't wanna speak out or have language issues. Songs are another great way to talk about, you're right, to get children right in front of people, get some language going, and some children actually prefer to sing rather than talk. <laughs> so singing could actually be really helpful for children who may feel more comfortable, right, singing than speaking because they're shy and it's a social emotional issue or even because they have a language delay. As we talk about children with language, I'm going to keep going, everybody. Go ahead and chat in the chat box. I'm going to keep giving you ideas before we wrap up. So this is all for the parents, everyone. This is all for teachers and educators right now. So you, using a microphone could be really helpful for children with language delays as well. So we have those simple microphones that you can grab right, right in Walmart. Another idea is to tape record your child singing and then let them hear it back. That's another great way for language for children to hear. And some children who have language delays can talk softly and you can't hear them or children who are shy and you can't hear them. You have the opposite issue where you have kids that yell, which I think I fit in more of that category. Give me some hearts and some thumbs up and some, some likes for that one. So children who are too loud when they speak, by playing that on a tape recorder can help them to hear that. So these are ideas to support, oh, we could just keep talking about language, about social emotional, and how all these ideas tie together. Another idea is we talked about singing, but also when children create their story or their slogan, it's hard to be five, it's hard to be 10, or writing their story about who do you miss, then they can also present these ideas. So one idea that we did is we were having at one school, we were having low parent engagement. So what we did each month is we had children presenting all these different ideas and um, having galleries um, after we did a story like it's hard to be five that we have an art gallery night another one is that we would have children do presentations um, where they would do poetry yeah slam books and slam, <laughs> slam nights and things like that poetry about um the stories that they read and parents are really engaged in some of those activities right parents you like those so those kind of poetry nights or songs or talent shows, those were other ways to get families really engaged and seeing their children be able to present all these great things that they were learning within a classroom. So let me check in the chat and see if anybody has comments or questions for today. If you don't have questions today, then definitely please continue to be my friend. Simple Solutions Educational Services is a professional development company. We can come visit your school. <laughs> yeah, we can come see you where we have our own story time and we kind of keep this going. Our story times include not just the story, but also information for teachers as well as for family members on extension activities for each story to make them rich and continuing, right, great activities going forward. We also provide training for educators on a variety of topics. And uh, we also have trainings like push past it trainings, literacy, math, um, coaching. We come to you if you want, whether it be virtually or whether it be in person. So I'd love to hear more from you. We also answer questions and those are completely free. No charge. So feel free to chat in the chat box but also message um, into Simple Solutions for comments. You're like, Simple Solutions? Does someone share this? Where do I find this? So you find us on Facebook at Simple Solutions Educational Services and like our page. My name is Angela Searcy and I have tons of resources for you. So another place to find me is on YouTube. 
on YouTube, I have all of our Pirate Cafes are saved on YouTube. So if you miss, yes, if you miss the Pirate Cafe, uh, let me um, share this. What I'll do is once our Facebook um, time together is over, I'll make sure I'll share all the past family cafes on a YouTube link. So don't go anywhere after this is over. And you'll be able to see other family cafes that dealt with a variety of different topics. All those topics, we have trainings and activities that we share about that. We also answer questions for families um, and also educators and therapists. I was a home visitor for many years <laughs> as well. So if you have questions about, oh, my child, I'm noticing they're having, you mentioned language issues. I'm noticing my child is having a language issue. I'm a child development specialist. So I provide support for language issues, physical challenges, cognitive, attention span. So I am a resource for you. Our Simple Solutions page is free. So we love providing free resources and answering questions there. And then also the YouTube channel is free to you. There's no, yeah, sometimes like, do I have to pay to subscribe? Absolutely not. So we hope that you're able to share, subscribe, and get more ideas to support you, um, no matter where you are. Um, welcome to those from all over. We're happy that you joined us. And I'm going to be wrapping up our time together. So thank you. Put in the chat box, give me those emojis and those emotions. But thank you all for joining today. Now, if you liked our time, I'm going to remind you, like it, like our page, Simple Solutions, share it. Like my YouTube channel, share it, subscribe. I guess it's subscribe, like <laughs> for YouTube. I'm also on LinkedIn, so that's another place to reach me, as well as, of course, you know, Facebook and Twitter. So I hope that you're able to see me. I also will pop up on some TV stations at time to time, so WGN or WTTW. So those are other places to reach me. And definitely, you know, that I'm an author as well. So please join me again. We have, yes, we have one more Facebook Live Family Cafe. It is happening in June. So come back, um, the next time is June 26th, 1230 Central Standard Time. I know, last time we had someone from Australia that joined us at like, I don't know, it was like 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> so um, if you do miss us, we will be able to um, have those remember as um, a playlist so when you get to my youtube channel which i'm about to share in literally three minutes you're like share it angela please share it so i'm going to also share in the chat box in the comments here i guess is the best word my link to my youtube channel on my youtube channel you will see several playlists so there's a playlist, for example, for COVID-19 resources or a play. Yeah, that's like 85 videos or there's a playlist for, for example, literacy. So if you want to hurt some of my ideas. Oh, yeah. You're like, OK, I heard some of your ideas. I want to get more. There's a literacy playlist, a math playlist. Um, there's like playlists for STEM. Yep. <laughs> um, and those playlists are for all ages of children. So there are, they actually go from infants and toddlers all the way to teenagers. So some of the playlists for teenagers are about the teen brain. Yeah, they're similar to two-year-olds. Not very different. <laughs> so the teenage brain. Um, there's a playlist about restorative justice. There's a playlist about trauma. So you'll be able to see several playlists on my YouTube channel. One, if you want to get to these story times, there's actually story times in English and Spanish. And there are currently, I think about six, actually this will be the seventh story that will be, and we're going to keep it going. Um, so if we discontinue our Facebook Lives, I don't know if we will, we're getting a nice response. Yeah, yeah, chat in if you like them and you want to keep them going. But YouTube is another uh, way that you can also connect. So I want to thank everybody for joining today, our Facebook Live, and I hope I see you again, uh, you know, next week and also in maybe some other venues. Thank you, everyone. Great Father's Day. Oh, Father's Day. Have a great Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you.